There are many videos like this, but this one is mine. What's good everybody and welcome to my packing video. If you're a new jumper and you're just learning how to pack, I hope that you can follow along with relative ease. And if you're an experienced jumper, I hope that you can pick up a couple of efficiency tips here and there and hopefully make your pack job just a little bit cleaner. All right, let's get into it. The tools I'm gonna to be using for this pack job are gonna be five clamps, a pull-up cord, a small rubber band, a stake, and a thin sheet of plastic. When we get started, the first thing that I'm gonna do is weight down the container so it's not gonna slide around as I move through the pack job. There's multiple different ways to do this. If I'm packing outside, I typically like to use a stake and just put that in between the leg straps. And when doing this, just make sure that the leg straps are either all the way open or all the way closed, just so that they're even. And then I'm just gonna open up the container so everything is out of my way and I can see what's going on with everything. So I'll get all of the flaps open and out of the way, open up the riser covers, and just make sure that everything is clean. Then I'm gonna run the lines. We'll do this by separating the control line, rear riser, and front riser in one hand, and do the same thing on the other side. Step into the center, and then walk forward up to the canopy. Give everything a shake. Swing it forward a little bit, getting tension on all the line groups. And once I'm here, I'll have a look at my hands and I can see that the fronts on the bottom are completely clear and I can drop those and they'll fall clean to the ground. Same thing with the rears. If they are completely clear, I should be able to drop those and they will fall completely clear to the ground. And I'm left with the two control lines in my hand. Look back to the container and verify that they are in fact clear and there's nothing over the top of them. Then take a couple of steps back to the cascades. Depending on the canopy you have, you may have a loop up here with four or five independent uppers going up to the tail. And on newer canopies, they're starting to do this kind of cascaded system where they all feed out of one line. And as you look here, I can actually see a couple of twists in the uppers. So all I'm gonna do is untwist them here in my hand on both sides so that then I can see that both sets are completely clear going up to the canopy with nothing wrapped around them and the twist that was in them is now below my hands so keeping them below the hands I'm gonna run those twists all the way back to the toggles keeping both lines in my hand while I do and once I get to the toggle I can see the twist is here I'll release that toggle let the twist spin out and then reset it back on the velcro same thing on the other side a lot of people will do this one at a time i just think it's a little bit more efficient to do them both together once we've done that i know that the control lines are clear there's no step throughs or anything like that in the canopy so i'm going to set the brakes i like to do as much work at the container as possible before i go up to the canopy so then i don't have to come back and forth very much when i set the brake i'll release the toggle and move everything over to the outside of the riser. When looking at the brake settings, most canopies will come with the, from the factory with two brake settings. We call the one that's closest to the toggle, factory shallow, and the one that's closest to the canopy, factory deep. Some canopies are now being released with a third setting installed, and at the time of this recording, the only ones to my knowledge that have that are the Hey Duke by Squirrel and the Alt T by Adrenaline. If you do have a third setting on your brake line, I would recommend you test it off a very forgiving object first as the majority of the time they can come from the factory a little bit too deep. So for now we're just going to assume that you just have two settings so we're using the one closest to the canopy or factory deep and when we set it I'll move everything over to the outside of the riser. I like to stow my excess on the outside. Some people like to do them on the inside. It really doesn't make too much of a difference. Some riser systems will have a velcro enclosure on one side and that will dictate where the excess is going to go but it's all kind of accomplishing the same thing. So when setting the brake, I'm gonna take this white loop and pass that through the brake setting, pass it through the guide ring, and then take the toggle and pass that through the loop and into the keeper on the other side. 
once that's there I'll mate all the velcro and then take whatever excess I have you can put a little bit of a fold if there's a little too much and then tuck that into the stow band on the back of the riser once that's in you can see that there's a little bit of slack here on the white loop so all I'm going to do is grab the control line and pull up towards the canopy that's just going to help prevent some wear on it exact same process on the other side release the toggle excess goes over to the outside of the riser take the white loop pass that through the brake setting pass that through the ring and then pass the toggle through the loop and into the keeper on the other side mate the velcro take the excess and stow that behind the riser and lastly grab a hold of the control line pull towards the canopy to take out the slack now I'm going to bring the risers together and put a clamp on them so that they're nice and centered. Sometimes if you have three rings, people will tie the rings together. I typically don't like that because the rings can still slide and they can get uneven. So all I'm going to do is face the toggles away from each other and then grab them all the grab all of the risers together and pull a little bit of tension. When I do that, I'm going to bring everything in and there should be lots of points of reference here that I can make sure that everything is even. Once I see that all these wraps and elastics and the links and the toggles and all that are in line, I'll take a clamp and just put it down on the ground facing like that. Now I'm going to go up to the canopy and flip everything so the nose is on the right hand side and the tail is on the left. Do this by taking both control lines across my hand and then both rears and then take both fronts in the other hand, split everything slightly to the side, step into the middle and then walk forward staying low at the beginning and when I get to the canopy I'll stand all the way up and just separate my hands completely. The main reason that I stay low in the beginning is so that I don't accidentally knock that clamp over behind me. If I do that I just have to go back and reset it. Now before I put it down on the ground I'm going to shake the nose over to the side and the tail over to the side just so the bottom is a little more clear and then I'll step forward get tension and lay everything flat on the ground. Come back down and grab my four clamps. Come back to the top and I will take the pilot chute. Get that out of my way for now. And I'm going to kneel down, or set myself up in a straight line with the container. So I'm staring directly at that clamp that I just put on the risers. I'm going to take all of the canopy and just slide everything over to my right so that I'm at the nose. Once I'm at the nose, I'm gonna throw all the cells out of my way to get to the bottom one. So I can see that that's the outside nose cell. There's nothing underneath it. And then I'm gonna bring that back in to line it up with that clamp. As I work through the nose, I'm gonna be doing multiple things at the same time. So first thing I'm doing is just grabbing the outside of the cell and pulling a little bit of tension to the side. And at the same time, I'm grabbing the ZP and I'm basically trying to find a point in the ZP where there's a straight line between my hand, the A tabs, and the container. Once I find that spot, I can lift my foot up, put it down on top of my hand, and take my hand away. If I come forward here, you can see that those two tabs are nice and stacked, and as I work across the nose, I'm trying to get all of the A tabs to do that exact same thing. So moving on to the second one, I'll pull the cell back, grab a hold of the ZP, pull back until I can see tension again on the A tabs, lift my foot, put it on top of my hand, move the hand away. And then it's the exact same process every time. So slide back, pull on the ZP, line up the tabs, and again. Working through all seven, I think that was six. So this is seven. Now, once I've got all seven, I'll keep some tension on my foot, push some of the fabric over to the side, and I'll just do a quick verification that all eight lines are nice and stacked and they're in line. Now I can take another clamp, lift my foot up, grab that spot that I was just keeping tension on, and place a clamp on top of it. I'm going to put my hands on the mouth of the clamp and pull back a little bit of tension, not much because the clamp will slip off, and then just place my foot down on it to hold it in place. 
Now I'll take the outside three nose salts. One, two, three. Put a little bit of a chop in the center, split those over to the side. Take the center cell, put that on top of those, and then count out the other three outside nose cells. One, two, three. Then grabbing a hold of the clamp and put my thumb on top of that center cell, lift everything up, tuck those three cells under, then take the center cell, open it up slightly, and then flip everything over so it's facing the ground. You don't have to be super neat with that because we're actually going to dress the nose later, but it's always good to get a good start. So now, this shape that I have here, this kind of triangle, is the exact same underneath the canopy. And as we work across the line groups, we're basically going to stack all of the can half of the canopy on the left, half of the canopy on the right. And as I move through the pack job, you'll see me doing things like this a lot, just getting fabric out of the way, trying to keep everything flat. That's just habits I've been in. Don't feel like you have to be doing that right away. Now I'll come over and grab my top B tab. I like to work from the top down because there's nothing on top of it and it makes it just easier to grab. So grabbing it with my right hand, I'll give it a little bit of a shake and then pass it into my left hand. And repeat that same process on all of the tabs. And as I move through, I'm trying to get all the stitching on the tabs to line up as close as I possibly can. Five, six, seven. So notice I've got all seven tabs here lined up pretty well. And then I'll take another clamp and when I clamp this group, I'm actually going to clamp the fabric just below the tabs. I don't want to actually put it on the tabs because it could slip off and I don't want to put it on the stitching because I might accidentally snag one of them or just damage it. Now, I'm going to pull a little bit of tension from the container to my hand and then a little bit of tension in between the A's and the B's. When I've got that point, I'll count out three cells, one, two, three, place my hand down on top of the fourth one and then lift up and over to the side this clamp will stop at my shin and I'll slide my hand out of that fold and grab a hold of the corner. Once that's here, I can bring the clamp down a little bit and then shake back and forth until I see that nice edge down on the corner. Once I can see that, I'll lift the clamp up, split my center cell, so I've got just like that, and then put my hand into the side and push some of that fabric over. Pull a little bit of tension back in the clamp and then place it down on the ground behind the A's. Take the bridle, pass it over your shoulder, don't need that just yet, and then repeat the same process with the C's. One, two, four, five, six, seven. I'm just going to push some of that out of the way. And then come back over here, again, clamping just below the tabs and pull a little bit of tension between the container and my hand and a little bit of tension in between the B's and the C's. Count in three cells again, one, two, three. Hand down on top, lift up and over. Clamp will stop at about your shin, sliding the hand back out of the corner and then grabbing onto it. Shake back and forth until you see that nice edge. Then lift the clamp up, split the center cell once again. Hand can go in on the side and push the fabric over. And this time, as well as splitting it, I'm actually gonna pull back slightly so the bridle attachment point is exposed. Set that clamp back on top of the Bs. And last one will move across to the Ds. So it's gonna be the exact same process, starting at the top first. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven. Take my last clamp, grab the fabric just below the tabs, a little bit of tension between the container and my hand, a little bit of tension between the C's and the D's. Got that edge on the corner already. Now lift the clamp up one more time. Split that center cell, hand in, push everything over to the side, and then let that rest behind the C's. Now I'll pull the stabilizer out a little bit, and then I've got my three folds that I just made here. 
Now I'm gonna put my knee down on the back corner of the canopy and just lie down and spread everything out as flat as I can. Following this tape on the stabilizer, I'm just gonna throw it over to the side and then follow that outside seam all the way across the tail. All I'm doing here is just taking any folds that may have happened, just making sure that it's nice and organized. And I'll finish with the stabilizer on the other side. And then I should have three folds over here. So CD fold, BC fold, AB fold, and we're left with the three outside nose cells that we folded under the canopy at the beginning. Now, these all look pretty organized already, but I'm just gonna shake them out a little bit just to make sure they're lined up. And then same process as I did on the other side, knee on the back corner, lie down, flatten everything out. Now I'm gonna come up and stand in the center of the canopy with one leg on each side. And I'm just gonna organize everything left and right first. So taking the stabilizer again, I'm gonna follow the tail, flaking the upper control lines into my hand. One, two, three, four. This canopy has four, some have five. Pull tension back on the stabilizer and just set the control lines off to the side because I don't need those just yet. And then I'll follow that edge get to my tail pocket, which is gonna mark the center, flip that out of the way, and then get over to the other set of upper control lines, one, two, three, four, pull back on the stabilizer, and set those off to the side again. Now we're gonna flake the bottom skin. When flaking the bottom skin, I like to start at the Ds and work my way up to the As. I know a lot of people that do the opposite, but I just think this is a little bit more confusing because you kinda of have to dig underneath lines and it just makes everything a little bit harder to access. So by doing it this way, I am gonna put a little bit of slack into the lines initially, but I'm gonna take it right out afterwards, so it's really not a big deal. When I look down to my right-hand side, the first four lines on top should be my four Ds. So one, two, three, four. As I grab those, I'll just grab them all at the tabs, pull a little bit of tension, and lift those up. And it gives me great access into my center cell. And then the next four lines that are closest to me should be my four C's. It's worth noting that on all the tear canopies they have inboard stabilizers here, so the lines won't be just stacked on top of each other nice and neat. I can see that I have two C lines here and the other two are actually hidden behind that stabilizer. So just know that that is normal if you have an tear canopy and you will get used to it after a few pack jobs. So I'll reach down, grab those four, pull a little bit of tension on them, and then I'll actually place the Ds into that same hand, switch hands, lift up, and then I can access my center cell underneath. Same process with the Bs, reach down, grab the four together, resting the Cs and the Ds into that hand now, switch hands, lift up, and then flake that bottom cell. Once they're all done, I'll lay them back down on top of each other, and then I'll just pull a little bit of manual tension on each set to take the slack that I just put into them. And we're gonna do that properly with the clamps in a couple of minutes, but for now, that's totally fine. Same process on the other side. Top four lines are gonna be my Ds. Grab a hold of those, lift up, flake the center cell, reach down, grab the next four, which are my Cs. Flake your center cell. Grab the next four, which are the Bs. Switching hands, flake. Then I can move them all back into the center, pulling a little bit of tension on them again to get them nice and stacked. When you've done this, there should be a nice little channel in the center here. Now we're going to set the tailgate. I'm going to take a small rubber band, and I'll start with the line that actually has the tailgate on it, which is going to be my inner C line. And when I set this, it's important just to make sure that this little white loop is on the bottom. So, got the tailgate first line I'll put in is the D line which is right above it move across get my opposing C line and the D line above that so now I've got all the inner C's and D's inside the tailgate reach over grab one set of control lines put them in and then reach over grab the other set of control lines put those in and I'll take my little rubber band pass that over the bundle say once twice Sometimes I'll do two or three, or sometimes I'll do three, I just did two, 
depends on the strength of the rubber band. So to verify, I can lift all those lines up and have a look down at the container and I can see that there are no other lines inside the tailgate, so it's good. If you want it to be 100% certain, or if you're just first learning, you can come down to the container, take the control lines, the inner C's and D's, which should be a different color to the rest of the lines if you have an, a modern canopy. And as I run them up to the canopy, I'm going to keep my hands quite low. So I've got the control lines and inner C's and D's here, and then everything else is in the rest of my hand. So keep your hand close to the ground so you don't accidentally pull the canopy up and mess up some of your work. And then once I get here, you can see that everything is in the tailgate that's supposed to be and there's nothing wrapped around. You can also see there's a little bit of slack in the lines here. So I will come back to the clamps and then starting at the A's, I'll just pull a little bit of tension on each one. So A, B, C, and D. So I've taken all the slack out. And then sometimes I'll see people place an extra clamp here just to help keep all the lines centered. And I've also seen people use their bridle to tie around it. But again, you can add as many things as you like to try to make it more efficient. So coming back here, I'm gonna take the tail, fold that over, flatten everything out just a little bit. And then I'll take all of the tail on one side and get it out of my way until I get to the stabilizer. When I get to the stabilizer, I'm gonna pull a little bit of tension on it and pull that up into the middle and then take my first fold and just lay it down flat. So this seam is gonna mark the center. Then I'll grab the next one, bring it down. These seams can be harder to see because they're a little bit hidden, but they should present themselves fairly well as you move across. Getting all of the seams and all the lines stacked on top of each other nice and neat. And each one of my folds should be about the same size. Finishing at the tail pocket. Same process on the other side. I'll take all of the tail and fold it up until I get to the stabilizer. And then when I get to the stabilizer, pull a little bit of tension back on it, take the first fold and bring that down. Finishing at the tail pocket. Flatten everything out again once more. And that's pr looking pretty good so far. So now I can release the D clamp, throw that over to one side, then I'll come over to the center and grab my tail pocket, lift this up and grab two of the seams here and bring those in together. And then I can bring this down to about the tailgate and then bring the mouth of the tail pocket all the way down to just where the lines meet the fabric. Once that's here, I will open the tail pocket. And then inspect my rubber band, which is inside this hole underneath. So I'll take all the twists out, and then I'll just give it a stretch, make sure it's not about to break. That looks pretty good. Now I can release the container. Coming down, I'll pull my stake out of the ground, throw it to the side. Now to set the locking stow, I'm first going to use the width of my hand as a rough measurement. You don't have to be super anal about doing this. I'm just going to make a fist below the mouth of the tail pocket and then roll my hand up and at the same time pull some line with it, opening my hand and just creating a loop just above my fist. 
I usually go at about half or three quarters the width of the tail pocket. This might be a little bit more, but that's totally fine. Then holding that tight, I'll take the rubber band out. And depending how strong the rubber band is, I'll do one or two wraps with it. As long as that's gonna hold until you get the line stretch, you'll be good. So now that's inside, I'm gonna swing around, sit down on the canopy in the center, and then lay back, squeezing out as much of the air as I can. Then sit up, make sure that the tail pocket is completely open, there's nothing inside there. And when I stow the lines, first I'm going to take two grips on the line, keep the first one tight, and then use the second one to start to pull everything up and over. And I'm going to pull about a straight line just to the back of the tail pocket. Now I'm going to flip my other hand so it's face down, and then create a loop over to one side. And as I'm doing that, I'll put my left hand inside, and that's going to dictate how big that loop is going to be. Same process on the other side. I'll reach over, grab some line, pull it back, and then move my right hand in to dictate the size of that loop. Once that's been done, I'm gonna repeat that same process, just keeping my hands facing the ground, pulling back to the corner each time. And as you move closer to the container, you can start to make the loops slightly smaller if you like. It's okay if they're all about the same size as well. You just don't want to make your last loop bigger than the first. So I'll pull that all the way down so the bumpers are almost touching the edge of the tail pocket. Take out any piece of debris that's inside it and then close the tail pocket. Making sure I mate all the Velcro on the front and the sides and ensuring that there's no lines trapped inside there. Release this clamp, place that over on the same side I put the other one, and then split the risers so that they're flat. Roll off to the side where the clamps are, and now we're going to get started on the reduction folds. I'm going to do two folds into the middle. Some people like to do one. I like to do two because I feel like it just makes everything that little bit tighter, and it makes putting everything in the container a little bit easier. So I'm going to grab all my folds here, fold them on top of the tail, and I'm using the edge of the tail pocket as my reference. So I'll get everything over to the side here, get that nice and flat, that's one fold, and then I'll take that and fold that into the center again. As I do this, I'll push down on the center of the tail, making sure I'm not pushing it out of the way, and then let that rest. Once it's down, I can block it with a knee, push it down on the tail underneath again, and then squeeze as much of the air out as I can. Place one clamp high. I like to do it at about the point of the triangle on the nose cells, and then one down low. Basically splitting the canopy into thirds. My camera accidentally shut off there, but I think I got it. So coming over to the other side, repeat that same process. Take everything, fold it on top of the tail, into the edge of the tail pocket and flat and then fold all of this into the center. Once that's here, you can place one knee down on top, flatten all of this out, take another clamp off, match it up with the one on the opposite side, and then take another clamp and place that down low, matching it up with the opposite side. Now I'm going to get the container ready for the canopy. So I'll kneel down here, grab one of my risers, and split it over to the side of the tail pocket. When I do that, if a little bit of line comes out, that's okay. Just don't want too much to come out. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. So I'm just kind of moving them off to the side. Once that's here, I'm going to ensure that my top flap is out of my way, riser covers are open, that looks pretty good. And then I can lean down and get my leg straps out of the way also. When I place the canopy into the container, I'm gonna do a couple of things at the same time. I'm gonna lift the canopy up 
And then while maintaining tension on the risers, I'm gonna slide the container under the canopy. So as I do this, I'll put one thumb down on top of the tail pocket, grab all the lines with the rest of my hand, lift everything up, and just put my hand underneath to verify that I haven't accidentally missed any lines. And I'll grab the container, lift the canopy up, slide the container under, making sure that my risers are nice and tight, and then I can lean forward and then bring the canopy down to the bottom of the container. And then if a little bit of line needs to escape from the tail pocket, that's totally fine. On this container, it has sewn in corners, so that'll create a nice little shelf for the canopy just to rest in at the bottom. If you have bottomless corners, you would just come down to the bottom of the container, something that you'll figure out fairly quickly. Now, as we're here, I'll put some pressure down on the canopy, place a knee in the center about where those clamps are, and then I'm gonna do my first fold right at the top of the container. So I'll take both ears together, lift everything up, fold it over, and place it down on the other side. And grab the bridle and pilot chute, throw it out of my way, and come around so I'm centered with everything. Once I'm here, I have all my seven nose salts, which I'm just gonna to bring together at first, you can actually run your hand down under the canopy and bring those in together and just take out any wrinkles or folds that might be here on the side. Once I have everything nice and neat looking here, I can actually lift the canopy up and have a look underneath to see what my risers are doing. If they were uneven or there's a little bit of slack in them, I can use this as an opportunity to fix that. And personally, I like to have the toggles facing out, so I'm just gonna set them that way and then place the canopy back down on top of it. Now we're gonna dress the nose. So to do this, I'm gonna take one side and throw it over, and then take the outside three cells again, just like we did at the start, only this time I'm gonna roll them in to the center. Once it's here, I can just roll one, two, three, and then take the center cell, lift the canopy up, and wrap that all the way around the side and leave it over to that same side. Same process on the other side. I'll take the three nose cells, run those tapes down, get any wrinkles out, and then do three rolls in. One, two, three. And take the center cell and wrap that around the whole pack job. Now, if your pack job is relatively neat and things are staying together, I can actually remove these two clamps now. Then I can tuck the rest of that nose into the side, and if there's any tapes kind of drifting here, I'm just gonna dress it a little bit. Split that center seam right there, and get those so they're looking about even. Some people will just leave their nose like this, that works great. I did it for a long time myself, but I actually prefer to take this outside tape and wrap it all the way up around the nose, coming around to the side, and then I would roll it in nice and tight here. Once it's like that, I can remove this clamp that's on my A's, take that away, and then I'm gonna set myself down and put a knee right at the bottom of the container. And that's gonna mark where I do my last fold. So I can move everything off to the side here, seeing that the bridle attachment point is clear in the center and I've got two very distinct ears. So I'm just making sure that that's set first, and I can bring it back together, and then make my last fold right here at the bottom of the container. Then take the bridle and pilot chute again, get it out of your way, and come around to the bottom. Now, I have two ears that are separated over here to the side with the bridle attachment point in the center. When this is here, I'm gonna take these tabs from one side and just tuck them under to get them out of my way. I'm not doing a super tight fist because that'll kind of create a lump in the container and it can make it a little bit harder to work with. And then I'll just rest one knee on top and repeat the same process on the other side. So taking that tail on one side, get the tabs out of the way with the bridle attachment point clear in the center. Once that looks something like that, I'm gonna move forward and put all my weight down on the canopy. Then I can take the two clamps off at the back. And looking here on the right hand side, if I've done my job correctly, I should be able to see the entire side wall on that side. 
and same on the other side. Now I'm going to take this outside flap, pull it up and over, and then lift my knee and put it on the ground next to the container. I'm not putting a, lot, a ton of pressure this way, I'm just more pushing into the ground. Repeat the same process on the other side, picking that flap up and over, keeping pressure on the canopy with my hand as I do so, and then I can rest in here. And just to make this easier for you to see, I'll open that flap up so you can see all the grommets. So now I have both top grommets pretty close together, I've got my bridle attachment point in the middle, everything is looking pretty good. Most containers will have a manufacturer's recommendation on which flap you're going to close first. On the Apex Summit, they say that you can actually close it left or right first. Personally, I like to do the left first, so if I'm doing that, I'll take the bridle and pass it over my left leg. And I can reach down, grab my top flap, and bring that up, and place my pull-up cord through it. Make sure that's even. And then I'm going to thread it through the top grommet on this side. I'm not pulling any tension on it. And then through the other side. So now I have the pull-up cord through all three flaps. And before I start pulling tension on it, I'm going to put my hand in underneath the canopy, pushing down on the nose so that it stays in place. And I'm not accidentally going to make it shift around as I start cranking left and right. When you've got a position that's similar to this, I'll give a little bit of tension on it. And when I feel like they're getting kind of close together, I can center the top flap like this and then push down on it as I bring the grommets close together and once they're almost touching I'll take a wrap with my hand, block them with my other hand and then pull straight up and forward to expose that closing loop. Take the pin that's closest to the bridle attachment and then put that through the closing loop. Once that's through, I can release it just by tilting the pin up and then sliding the pull-up cord out underneath. With the excess bridle that you have, you can just put a little bit of a fold in it and then tuck that in behind your flap out of the way. If you have a bridle that has Velcro on it, you can Velcro it right here. And if it doesn't, don't worry about it. Now we'll close the bottom flap. So if I've done my job correctly here, when I close the flap up, the grommets should be almost touching. And if you have bottomless corners on your rig here, they may be set out to the side. All you can do, all you have to do at this point is pull the canopy to the side and you can fold them up against the side wall of the container. You can also set them at the bottom. I just think it looks a little nicer if you do it up at the side. So I'll thread the bottom closing loop now. And then my bottom left flap first. Not pulling a super crazy amount of tension just yet. And then my bottom right. And then as I pull on both of them together, I'll push down on the bottom flap, pull these over to the side, then take a wrap and pull back towards me, exposing that bottom loop. Take that pin, pass it through the closing loop, and then release it with the same process by tilting the pin up and sliding the pull-up cord out underneath it. Now I can take the slack that's in between my two pins, do a little bit of a fold on top, and then close the flap. Then I can come up here, make sure there's no slack in my risers. That looks pretty good. I have sewn in risers, so I have nothing to check. If you have three rings, this is a good chance to have a look at them. This side looks good too. Close that over. And now we're going to stow the pilot chute. So I'm going to get the leg straps out of the way. If my chest strap is down here. I'll kind of tuck that out of the way also. And then I'm going to grab that little sheet of plastic that I showed you at the beginning. This is a really handy tool for just making sure that you have a perfect pilot chute every single time. And it's also really helpful when trying to get a, B, a pilot chute into a BOC that um, is quite tight. So starting at the bottom pin, I'm just gonna do a little bit of a half fold and tuck that underneath the sidewall. Some rigs will have a little bridle channel here, so I'm actually gonna tuck that in and just follow it along 
until it gets into the mouth of the BLC. Or right above the mouth, I should say. Once that's there, I know exactly how much bridle that I have left to work with. So I'll take my hand and run it all the way down to the attachment point on the PC. Take any twists out. Give it a couple of fluffs. And then grab a hold of it. Run my hand all the way up the mesh to the cap. And then give it a little bit of a shake. So I've got this kind of a mushroom shape. Once this is here, I can flip it over and then slide it up so that the cap is right at the top of it. And then I can move some of the ZP out of the way and scrunch up a little bit of the ZP so that there's some mesh at the bottom. So my goal here is to fill the entire BOC with the pilot chute and I want a little bit of mesh at the bottom. I like to leave it like that so that when you throw the pilot chute, the air can access it a little bit earlier and you're less likely to have a hesitation. So I'll fold that up here and then we're just going to do S folds up to the center. And once I've got them all in, I'm going to leave enough bridle out that's the length of the BOC so that when I slide it in, there's enough space for it to move. Take half the mesh on one side, fold it on top, same thing on the other side, and then run your hand all the way up so all the mesh and all the folds are in there, and then reach over the cap of the pilot chute, grab the folds that you just made, and then scrunch the pilot chute down on top of itself. So then I'll have something that looks like this. So I've got the ZP with some mesh exposed at the bottom. Now I'll take my sheet of plastic, roll everything up nice and tight in it, lift it up, take any twists that may be in the bridle out, and then I'm gonna block the corner of the rig with my foot, slide the plastic all the way to the bottom, then trap the pilot chute with my hand, and then slide it all the way up. I like to put it in quite tight in the beginning, and then I can move it, tuck in any excess bridle that might be there. So I like to put it in nice and tight first, and then when I actually have the rig on, I can move the handle out to the position that I actually like it. Then, you flip the rig over. If you have a stash bag pocket on the back here, this little piece of plastic can actually live inside the container. So that's always with you. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is just jump up and down on the rig a couple of times with my knees, squeeze out any air that might be inside it, and just shape it out a bit. Now I'll come back and just count my tools. So I have the pull-up cord that I used, the rubber band that I had at the start is on the tailgate. My five clamps are here. The sheet of plastic is in the back of the rig. And my stake is over here. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and feel free to hit me up if you have any questions.